Good morning, everybody. I was sitting before I do my customary uh, introduction. You know, there's a time for form and order, and there's a time to just say what needs to be said. Amen. I was sitting, thinking, wearing this mask, and I was thinking, man, I'll be glad when we get to take these masks off. So I wrote it down on a piece of paper. And then I thought, hmm. Take away the mask. The title of the sermon. Well, amen. But not for today. I, uh, I want to save that one. Because I want it to savor in my mind and in my heart. And there will be a time. That you'll hear that title and you'll go, oh, okay, yeah, this is the one he was talking about. And you're going to look at me and you say, all right, brother, you already got us warmed up a long time ago for this message, so you better be on point. And so I will, by God's grace and by God's mercy, take away the mask. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I'm thankful to be here with you this morning. I'm going to mute the mic real quick. I'm one of those people. I don't like a whole bunch of stuff in my way. Anybody else like that? Yes, sir. Sometimes my arms get to swing and I'm kind of tall and, you know, I walk through places and my arms always hitting stuff. My head always hitting stuff. I'm not that tall, but still, you know, it's like the world is not big enough for me. That would preach too. Let me write that down. And it's true. The world is not big enough for us because God made heaven. And he's still preparing it for us. And it's greater and it's beyond anything we could imagine in our, in our earthly minds. Amen. And we have to keep that in our minds. Because that's the prize. Amen. That's our ark. To remove us from this earth and from the sin of the earth. Amen. Amen. So we're glad to see you this morning. Glad you're here. Glad you decided to join with us. Uh, we all know that you had many different things you could be doing this morning, but you chose, you made a conscious decision to come and hear the word of the Lord. Amen. The gospel of Jesus Christ. I was listening to a radio show the other day, Christian radio show, and uh, the lady misspoke and she said gospel and she said hospital. So she said gospel. So when you're sick in your flesh, you go to the hospital. But when you're sick in the spirit and you need a move of the Lord in your life, you go to the gospel. Amen. Now, she didn't claim the word, so I get to claim it. I don't even know if she knew what she said, but I heard it. and I wasn't going to share it, so now you all have it too. I guess I got to share it with everybody. Amen. You get to tell your coworkers and your friends and your relatives, your enemies, you need to go to the gospel. They'll look at you kind of strange. Then you get to tell them what that means. Even if you don't know a hundred scriptures, I don't either. You may only know one or two. That's great. You share those two and then watch how God revelates your mind to other scriptures. You may not know the exact wording, but you know the whole spirit of the scripture. Amen. We took as a theme for this month, Mark chapter one, verse one, and it simply reads, The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's it. At first glance, it may appear that this choice of a monthly theme might be a little bit too limiting, a little bit slim, a little lacking. But rest assured that the power and the gravity of the ministry That these words encompass is more than any man or woman can comprehend. The Bible says if if the things that Jesus Christ did, if all that he did were written, the world couldn't contain the books 
of all the things that he did. Amen. Our morning scripture text is Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. And don't be alarmed if you miss some scriptures. I'll be going, you know, at like warp speed this morning because there's a lot of material. At least it seemed like it was when I was writing it. Um, <laughs> I'll paste, I'll uh, place the uh, outline on our band app. And uh, I'm sure we can find a way to put it on the website in case you miss some scriptures. Uh, Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7, I'll read it for you. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this opportunity once again just to stand before you, God, and in our hearts stand before you, though we may be sitting in a chair meditating on your word, God. We thank you for this opportunity, for there are so many things going on in our lives. It's like we can't keep up with ourselves, God. It's just so many things and distractions to pull us away from you. God, we pray you draw us to you. Because in your word it said that we have not chosen you, but you have chosen us. You have drawn us to you, God. There's nothing we can claim that we have done for you, God. That you didn't do for us first. God, thank you for waking us this morning. We pray for those who are in physical need of a healing this morning. We don't want to forget those who are in trouble, those who are suffering loss, those who are mourning loved ones. God, we pray for the babies that we be able to raise them in a way that's pleasing to you because we don't need anybody else in this world causing trouble. God, bless the message, bless the messenger. As we only seek your truth, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Notice the, the order, the process, the cause, the effect. If you look at the morning scripture text, it says, verse 7, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith as you have been taught, Bounding with thanksgiving. And verse 6, as you have, therefore have received Christ Jesus, so walk ye in him. So I wrote down this little thing on a piece of paper, and I have on one side, receive Christ, and I have an arrow going over, walk in Christ. And I'm going backwards. In order to walk in Christ, you have to receive Christ. In order to be built up, verse 7. You have to be rooted. In order to be taught, you have to be established. Established is an old word. Established is probably the word we use more frequently these days. Taught, established. So I'm going backwards. In order to get to the second part, you got to do the first part. Amen. And so that's where we're going today. To have Thanksgiving, you have to be abounding. And so I'm going to go back over those as I, take, as I get to each section, because each one of those is a section. And so we'll begin with receiving Christ. So how did you receive Christ? Uh, Paul admonished us in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, which reads, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Now, church, this is the way it's supposed to be. Not everyone has this privilege or has had that privilege. Uh, I watched an old gangster movie once, and, you know, even the gangsters had sense enough to send their kids to church. Amen. And it's really sad that with all the great scholars in the world, the church still has to beg people to be children's church teachers. How about Armand? Can I get amen? amen? Armand's watching online. Armand's our, one of our children's church leaders, and you should see the exasperation in his face when he has to come to the elders, 
say, you know. We all know what that means. It means all the people he asks, all the people he's depending on, somehow. We don't get the troops to line up and rank with their arms like this so the devil can't come through to take our kids. Not here to rebuke anybody. I could have been a children's church teacher. I volunteered, but they told me no. They said, no, nah, you're, you're supposed to be somewhere else. But I'm willing. I'm willing to do it right now. If somebody comes and take over and say, hey, brother, I got this, I'm out. I'll go teach children's church. I'll go wait at the door. I'll go sweep the floor. I'll mop the floor. I'll carry some instruments in. Whether we receive Christ as a child or later in life, we still have the responsibility to walk in Christ. Would you also agree that we must have a repentant heart to receive Christ? How can our sins be washed away by baptism, which is the mode of obedience to have the blood of Jesus applied to our lives if we don't have a heart of repentance? Let me read that again. Because somebody might say, hold on, that's a lot of words, brother. How can we have our sins washed away by baptism? Baptism which is the mode of obedience to have the blood of Jesus applied to our lives if we don't have a heart of repentance. So you're saying that baptism saves us? Yeah, same thing as the scripture says. I think it's 1 Peter chapter 3, does it say that? Is it the water? Nope. It's the faith of the operation of God. God, God chose water as that mode. I mean, he could have had a whole sea of Galilee full of the blood of Jesus it's all right, everybody. Go jump in that blood. But God is so wise. He's wiser than you. He's wiser than me. He chose water. Is there any place that there's no water? Somebody said, in the desert. Well, that ain't true either. If you watch these NASA feeds on the internet, you'll see they find water in space. Because, you know, they're always looking for God. They're always looking for life. I don't know... This has nothing to do with the message. Let me step on this side, to the left. What is the obsession with people looking for somebody to go and conquer all the time? Because you know when they get there, they're going to beat up somebody, right? Well, anyway. Let's look at Acts chapter 2, verses 36 and 37. Acts chapter 2, verses 36 and 37. We're talking about a heart of repentance, amen? Talking about receiving Christ. So that we can walk in Christ. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified both Lord and Christ. This is Peter talking to all of those gathered there on the day of Pentecost. Out of every nation under heaven. Amen. amen. And he said you're wrong. You are wrong. God hath made that same Jesus whom you have crucified. God made him both Lord and Christ. So we're just like they are. The next question. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? When you know you're wrong, you got to know what to do to get right. Yes, sir. right. Verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And again, Acts chapter 19, verses 4 and 5, talking about repentance, receiving Christ so we can walk in Christ. Acts chapter 19, verses 4 and 5. This is Paul recalling the baptism of John. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is, on Christ. Jesus. So John preached, you got to believe on the one that's coming after me, man. You need to be baptized for repentance. Okay. Verse 5. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So, 
John's time had come to an end because he had to decrease and Jesus Christ had to increase the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Then the one who died for our sins came so that we could receive remission of sins through his blood. So Paul is sharing this with people later on in the book of Acts saying, hey, this is what this is why he did what he did. Now you need to do what you need to do. So they got baptized in Jesus name. I always wondered, I'm not the smartest guy. Anybody else? Sometimes you have to tell me stuff four or five times. Maybe that's a guy thing. I don't see any women raising their hands, so it's a guy thing. Okay. That's because she's sitting next to Jim, her husband. You know, she, you know, she don't want him to feel bad. That's why she raised her hand. Oh, you raised your hand. Jim said he raised his hand twice for those who couldn't hear us. Donna's husband. Okay, so the whole baptism for repentance thing, and, I, and then, it, then it hit me like a ton of bricks. Oh, repentance had to be taught before you could teach baptism for the remission of sins. Oh, so that means I get to include it in the message this morning. Repentance before we get baptized. To turn from, repent, turn from, turn away from, change your life as much as you can before you become a Christian. You say, well, I want to be perfect before I become a Christian. It ain't going to happen. Matter of fact, probably 80% of what you want to do is not going to happen because you don't have the Holy Ghost living in you to prevent you, to remind you, to speak into both ears, not just one side and the devil on the other. Both ears, ah, ah, stop it. Shut it down right now. Don't even go over there. Amen. There's no way to get into Christ except to get into Christ. There are no shortcuts. This is the way according to Scripture. Jesus was baptized, so why do we make excuses and kick against the pricks? We must recognize that only God can cleanse us from our sins. And something I forgot to tell you, too. I was sitting down again. Did you know that Mark 1 and 1 the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is 12 words. And did you know that Donna shared about the 12, how does it go down to the 12 women in the Bible? Isn't it something when God's give you confirmation, even before you start opening your mouth to share anything to anybody, God already lets you know, hey man, I gave that to you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. How about the parents? You go to school, your children, and God kind of gives you something in your mind and say, hey, nah, why don't you say this instead? And then next thing you know, the child is confessing, showing you all the little chocolate on their fingers where they went and took some Hershey bars from somewhere. Amen. Walking in Christ. Romans 6, we read 1 through 8. Walking in Christ. And uh, in case I didn't say the first one, receiving Christ, this is walking in Christ. In order to walk in Christ, we got to receive Christ. Amen. In order to receive Christ, you got to have repentance. Amen. All right. Everybody? Okay, we're all good. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? No, you're not. That so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Well, brother, I, I, don't, I don't think I'm walking in that newness of life. Have you been baptized? What kind of baptism? Was it out of the Bible? Did you get it from some university? Some theologian's class, who himself, by the way, hadn't been baptized. I seem to remember that the, the disciples did the baptizing, right? So in order to be a disciple, you need to be baptized. If you have not been baptized yourself, you can't be a disciple. You're just talking. You're just sharing. You're a professor, but not a possessor. 
Verse 4 again, therefore we're buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. I know a guy, comes to church here when he can. He used to be a gangster. He got up here one time. Oh, by the way, he's not a gangster now. <laughs> because he's walking in newness of life. But it was so funny. Because, you know, we think people in church never used to be bad. Never, never were crackheads. Cokeheads. Alcoholics. Whoremongers. I could go down the list. Some of those I'm guilty of. So he shared, man, y'all don't know what I've been through. And, and he didn't go through the whole thing. He shared a little bit more of it with me one time or two. But he said, man, you just don't understand how God delivered me. The one who is forgiven the most, the same loveth much. Some of us can't even approach into that kind of love. We ain't been through enough yet. We didn't have to struggle and to suffer and to scratch and to pull ourselves out of that gutter before we even got introduced to Christ. Now I'm, trying, I'm not trying to play up street cred. I'm just sharing his testimony. It's not mine. You know, nobody had to punch me in my face, but about one time, and I got the message. I kind of like my teeth the way they are. Amen. <laughs> Even so, we should also walk in newness of life. Verse 4. Verse 5. For if we've been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. We shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if he be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. If we be dead in Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. So if these, things, if these old things are popping back up, men and brethren, what shall we do? Repent. And if you've already been baptized, repent and get it right. Hang around people like-minded. Those who want to go to heaven, amen. You can't hang around. Rooted in Christ. After walking in Christ, rooted in Christ is the next topic. Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He that comes to God must believe what? That he is. That he is. That he is what? A reward of them that diligently seek him. There is no belief. There is no root without faith. Amen? Because without faith, it's impossible to please him. You got to have faith to even believe that God exists. Now, you'll have people tell you, oh, I don't believe in God. Wait till the bullets start flying across the head. I had a girl tell me that one time. Wasn't probably, I was working at this one place doing some production kind of stuff. And uh, since I was a machine guy, I just, I got to walk around and talk to people, which I thought was kind of cool. Till the machine broke down, I'm sweating, right? And so, you know, conversation, sharing. I don't believe in God. Really? Okay. Probably three or four months later, when that car she was in started rolling and went into that ditch. She came back and her friend all skin up over here, the one that was real cutesy. And she walking around on her shoulder like this here. I said, uh, so what did you say when you, you know, when the car was rolling all over and skidding and sliding and went in that ditch and stuff? I said, did you call on the name of Jesus? She said, sure did. Amen. <laughs> Isaiah 45 and 6. And after that, Isaiah 45, 21. I'm going to speed up a little bit. Isaiah 45 and 6. That they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord and there is none else. And verse 21. Tell ye and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. 
Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I the Lord, and there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. He is a rewarder, Matthew 6 and 6. Matthew 6 and 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Diligently seeking God by prayer can yield a reward from God. Diligently seeking God in prayer can yield a reward from God. You can count on it. You can count on it. Oh, man, I knew it was something I forgot. The title of the message, Life Insurance. Life Insurance. I was going to have Jason come up here and sing this song that we always hear on the TV. You know, one of those goofy commercials. We are Christians. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> but I thought, man, that's silly. You can't do that. So I didn't tell him. Built up in Christ, amen, the next topic. And we, we're getting close. Uh, actually, only two more after this. Built up in Christ. 1 Peter 2, 1 through 5. 1 Peter 2, 1 through 5. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sin-sealed milk, milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. I mean, if you're going to be built up, you got to grow, right? If so be, you have tasted, verse 3, that the Lord is gracious. Wait a minute now. The sincere milk of the word, growing, putting aside all the crazy stuff in verse 1. If you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. So you mean to tell me that all those other things, you won't even know. If you didn't receive the grace of God. If you didn't realize that God was gracious. That stuff would just blow right by you, wouldn't it? The sincere milk of the word. Somebody to share with you. Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so. The sincere milk of the word. Teach it. Ooh. Man, that would preach. Mm. Take off my glasses so I can see. Amen. If so be, you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Verse 4. To whom coming as a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God, precious. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. You know, when you're at your job and you do stuff the right way, of course, you know, depending on who the end customer is, you don't want them to come back and say, hey, you didn't do that the right way. But I mean, ultimately, when you do things the right way, it's for your own soul, your own be ability to be able to sleep at night. It's for your work toward God and showing yourself to God, hey, I'm not a clown. I don't play those kinds of games. My name is on that. And guess what? God's name is on us. That's our reasonable service, amen? Are built up a spiritual house. Spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. Even though physically you did it. It's still a spiritual sacrifice. Because you had to fight yourself. Because everything that everything worth doing right is not easy. Some things require a little extra effort. And you might say to yourself, man, I ain't getting paid for this. It's time to go home. My lunch break is in 10 minutes. God is watching. God sees your efforts. He sees your labor of love for your family. Because ultimately, your family is going to be affected if you lose your job. Amen. Jude 1, verse 20. Jude 1, verse 20. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. There that word comes again, praying. So you mean to tell me prayer has more than one purpose? You can actually build us up. Amen. Established in the faith and 
taught is the next topic. And I want to give you a homework reference for Built Up in Christ because I don't think we have time to read it. That's uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I'll write that down. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 under Built Up in Christ. So now we're moving on to establishing the faith and taught. So, question. Does anyone here prefer hands-on learning? It used to be in the United States, they would have hands-on classes in our high schools to teach our young children and our young people trades. That kind of went away because somebody decided that our kids don't need to be, you know, tradesmen anymore. And now you see, looking at our economy, now you see why it was important. My initial thought was that these two were out of order. Establishing the faith and taught. Shouldn't it be taught and establishing the faith? That's what I was thinking, right? And okay, so sometimes we can't learn. Sometimes we can't be taught until we put our hands to the plow first. Or until we realize that whatsoever our hands find to do, we do it with all our might. Sometimes we think we already know something. Therefore, we can't be taught. James 4 and 10. James chapter 4, verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. He's going to establish you. Yes, sir. Amen? Amen? If you humble yourself. If so be, if tasted as the Lord is gracious. Amen? 1 Peter 5 and 5. Likewise, ye younger, 1 Peter 5, verse 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves to, unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. You know, it's, a, it's like a thing in athletics to be proud and super confident and uh, nobody can stop me. And I don't care what sport it is. You name a sport. And it's like that. I don't care if it's gymnastics. Matter of fact, I've seen some girls in gymnastics. Woo! I wouldn't want to tangle with them. Some of those faces they give you, that look off they give you when they roll their eyes at you. If I did my eyes like that, it might not come back to the right place. <laughs> Remember that thing that one Olympian girl did where she made a, it was like a, I won't say her name, but she had a face like, kind of face she had, and that thing became a meme all over the United States. First Peter verse 6, chapter 5, verse 6. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Ephesians 4, verses 17 through 32. So I'll be reading that fast. Ephesians 4, verses 17 through 32. Oh, I know what it was I wanted to tell you. And this has to do with, uh, likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. My dad is almost 80 now. And he has some friends that would come by. You know, they work together in this facility. And uh, when I was in my little stage, five, six-year-old, seven-year-old, it was Mr. Whoever, Mr. Whoever. And when I got teenager, it was Mr. Whoever. It was Mr. Whoever. And when I got in my 20s, it was Mr. Whoever and Mr. Whoever. And when I got in my 30s, it was Mr. Whoever and Mr. Whoever. And when I got in my 40s, it was Mr. Whoever and Mr. Whoever. And when I got in my 50s, it was still Mr. And I promise you, I can go down there right now and it'll still be Mr. I will not call those men by their first name. Not going to happen. Ephesians 4, verses 17 through 32. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds. We're talking about establishing the faith and taught. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Because of the blindness of their heart. Now, this is what not to do. Who being past feeling have given themselves over into lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Man, we see that in the world right now. 
course, it was in the world 100 years ago, but we really see it now because we're of an age we can understand these things now. Verse 20, but ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. That you put off concern in the form of conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. But we serve God in our minds, right? Not our bodies. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. We were just talking about that. Doing good. How hard it might be. We were just talking about that, right? Let no corrupt communication, verse 29, proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. How many know that when you start talking like that, it make you kind of crazy? Get your blood pressure a little higher than what it ought to be. It puts you in a place where you're in trouble if you keep going that direction. Anybody ever had that happen? Verse 32 and be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. You ever had to forgive your boss? And I, and I use the word boss. I hate that word. Nobody's our boss. God don't even want to be your boss. He wants to be your God, your Savior, your King, the lover of your soul. But the people who are in authority in the position where we work, the work center, they're not our boss. They're not the boss of me. Not the boss of you. But people say it, and I understand where they're coming from, but I, you very rarely hear me refer to somebody as my boss. I just, ugh. Anyway, I'm kind of hard here too, so there is that. You ever had to forgive him, though? They can say some crazy stuff, and, and many of them, and I know from experience, are not trained to do what they're doing. However they got the job, we don't know. I think it's a joke of, of Satan to put people in charge who are crazy. But that's just my opinion. It just seemed to be there everywhere I go. Every now and then you get a, a, somebody who's in charge who's like, it's like, wow, this person is human. And if you're a boss, sorry, maybe you're the one that's human. And be you kind one to another again, verse 32, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. And the last section, and the shortest section, I know some of you are going, I'm glad for that. Abounding with thanksgiving. The last and the shortest. And we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Abounding with thanksgiving. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Your labor in the Lord. We had a church building down the street. And man, that was a huge building. Something was always broke. And uh, I know that the pastors and elders at that time hated to tell people, hey, we need money for this. And we need a fundraiser for that. And, you know, sometimes they just wouldn't say anything. They would just grit their teeth and go without themselves. I know that to be true because I've seen it with my own eyes. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Some parents have to do the same thing. The child needs to go to school. School fees, two, three hundred, four hundred dollars $400. And you got to pay the laptop fee in case they break it or step on it or throw it across the room. And you got to get uh, the checkup for dental and medical. And, and you really needed this particular thing for your job so you can do your job right. Or you really was planning on getting this to make the family life a little smoother. You can't do it. 
because you have to set that money aside for your children. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Hebrews 3 and 14. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 14. For we are made partakers of Christ if, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. Our last scripture, Colossians 3, verse 15. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. So after everything else, after all we have gone through in our lives, good or bad, be thankful. Amen. We've got to praise.